Hi everyone, this is Dr. Juwad. In this video, I'm going to talk about the blood pathway to the circulatory system. So, one thing to note when we're talking about this, we're taking a 3D person and making a 2D. So, you, one of the ways to study this, you want to divide it off in sections. Now, in my previous video, I went through the blood pathway through the heart and the structures of the heart. So, I put a link down below. So, remember, when it comes to the heart, you have the pulmonary artery and vein. Now remember, the arteries draw the blood away from the heart. It's going to go through the pulmonary circuit to get oxygenated, and it's going to come through the pulmonary vein to the left atrium, through the left ventricle, and again shunted through the aortic semilunar valve, through the ascending aorta. Now remember the mnemonic, the ABCs. So you have the aorta, the brachiocephalic trunk, which is going to supply the blood to the brachial area and, and the head. You have the left common carotid, and you have the left subclavicle artery, subclavian, because it's going to go underneath the clavicle. So let's start off at the common carotid. So the left common carotid goes north, and it splits into an internal and an external carotid artery. Now, the internal carotid artery goes deep into the skull, and that's one of the main arteries to suppl to, that supplies blood to the brain. The external carotid artery, you can see right here. Now, note that he is turned left. So there is a right external carotid artery as well. So the left, so the external carotid arteries basically supply the blood to the face and head, while the internal carotid artery supplies the blood to the brain. Now, ABCs, the left subclavian artery, the other main artery that supplies the blood to the brain is the vertebral artery and it goes to the vertebral foramen and, about, and to supply the blood to the brain. And that comes off of the subclavian artery. Yes, there is a left and right. So let's go over here. So you got the brachiocephalic trunk, which comes underneath the pulmonary, I'm sorry, the brachiocephalic vein, which turns into the, you have a left common carotid, so you have a right common carotid. You have a left vertebral artery, you're gonna have a right vertebral artery. You have a left subclavicle, left subclavian vein, and you have a right subclavian vein. Now, keep one thing in mind, this note to position. This is the left side, this is the right side. So the left, I'm sorry, so the right subclavian artery comes underneath the axillary area to become the right axillary artery, turns into the right brachial artery, comes down to the elbow region, now remember, this is the ulnar bone, this is the radial bone, so this is the ulnar artery, right, this is the right radial artery, and it does a loop on the palm, the superficial palmar branch or arch. Let's come back down here. So that's the head and that's the, that's the arms. Let's bypass the diaphragm. Now the bypass in the diaphragm now we do have an ascending aorta, we have a descending aorta, and we have a thoracic aorta, which supplies the blood to the thoracic region, and that's hidden. Bypassing the diaphragm, this area right here, this main artery is called the abdominal aorta. And it has three main posts. You have the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery. So the celiac trunk divides into, it supplies blood to the spleen, the stomach, and the liver. So this is the splenic artery, the gastric artery, and you have the common hepatic artery, which common hepatic artery is gonna divide into a left and right hepatic artery itself. Now you have a superior mesenteric artery. You can't really see where it's going to because remember the, the digestive viscera sits on top, so it has to be removed. Now, the mesentery is over here. So again, it supplies the blood to the, to the small intestines and the large intestines. So the superior mesenteric artery here supplies the blood to the small intestines and the first one-third of the large intestines. So if you have a superior mesenteric artery, you must have an inferior mesenteric artery. The inferior mesenteric artery supplies the blood to the last two-thirds of the large intestines in addition to the colon. You have a left and a right kidney, so you have the left renal artery, 
and you have the right renal artery. And that's all branches coming off the abdominal aorta. Now, coming down, down, section down there here, you have the pelvic region. Now remember the ilium, the ilium bones. So you have the common iliac arteries, left and right, and it comes just from the bifurcation. So the common iliac artery, the left one, comes from the split right here to this first drop off, which is the internal iliac artery, because after it splits, it becomes the external iliac artery. So really you have the common iliac artery, which comes from the bifurcation to the internal, and then after the internal iliac artery, it splits to become the external iliac artery. And you also have the sacral arteries, which again, these supply the blood to the pelvic regions, to the pelvic organs. So the external iliac artery bypasses the inguinal ligament and supplies blood down the leg. Now, there is a left and a right, but on this model, I'm just going over the left side. So remember that this is the femur. So this is the femur, so this is the femoral artery. And a branch off the femoral artery is the deep femoral artery. Now, there are other branches as you see here, but these are the ones that they are most commonly tested. So the femoral artery goes to the back of the knee, the popliteal area, so it turns into the popliteal artery. And the popliteal artery splits, it bifurcates to supply the posterior and the anterior tib, tibialis area. So this is the posterior tibial artery. This is the anterior tibial artery. Now this is very important. The anterior tibial artery supplies the blood to the dorsal side of the foot, which is called the dorsalis pedis. And respectively, this is the, the lateral plantar artery. The dorsalis pedis artery is very important to, to know and often tested because this is one of the pulse points. You want to you want to test the pulse points on the dorsalis pedis just to make sure there's still vascular there's still there's still circulation to the lower extremities if there's anything that happens from the belly button down. So that's important to know, dorsalis pedis. So that's the arterial system. So let's talk about the venous system, the venous return. Now, there is a, yes, there is an uh, anterior tibial vein and posterior tibial vein, but we're gonna talk about superficial veins. So the longest vein of the body, most superficial, comes from the heel all the way to the femoral vein, and that's called the great saphenous vein. It goes north, it joins with the femoral vein. It comes underneath the inguinal ligament, it pairs up with, we knew that this was the external iliac artery, so this is the external iliac vein, the right one. We know this is the right internal iliac artery, this is the right internal iliac vein. We know this is a common iliac artery, this is the right common iliac vein. This is the abdominal aorta on the left hand side, on the right hand side is the inferior vena cava, which again return, is the return flow to the heart. Now, you have the left and right kidneys, you have the left and right renal arteries, so respectively, you have the left renal vein, right renal vein, you have the great, I'm sorry, you have the superior mesenteric artery, you have the superior mesenteric vein, which drains the spleen, the stomach, so you have the splenic artery, you have the splenic vein, the gastric artery, the gastric vein, now, it's going to go to the liver. So what happens is that in, the, in this dry model, there is a portal system that drains the digestive viscera, the spleen, the stomach to filter to the liver because of the liver is, a fil, is, is one of our big filters. It has over 300 functions of the body. And every blood that's filtered through the liver, the next stop is the heart. And that's called the hepatic portal vein, which you cannot see here, but it's a very important vein to understand because this is the liver right here. So this port right here, this is, this is the hepatic vein. This is not the hepatic portal vein. This is the hepatic vein, which will come into the inferior vena cava, into the heart. So then let's talk about the extremities. So when you talk about the extremities, now remember left and right. There, yes, there is an ulnar vein. There is a radial vein, but we're gonna talk about more of the superficial veins. So on the inside of the arm, you have the basilic vein, which joins up with the brachial vein, which joins up with the axillary vein. 
that's on the inside of the arm. It's kind of tricky because the outside, most superficial, is the cephalic vein. The cephalic vein comes from the outside, comes up north to the anterior portion of the, of the humerus of the deltoid, and it joins with the right subclavian vein. Okay, so note that the cephalic vein doesn't join with the right axillary vein. The cephalic vein kind of bypasses the axillary vein and it joins up with the right subclavian vein. Now, one key thing to note, this vein right here, now when you give blood and they poke this vein, most likely they're gonna poke this vein and or this vein. This vein is the medial cubical vein. This is the vein that's usually poked when you have blood draws. So when you come to the head, now you have the common carotids, okay, which supply the blood to the brain and the head, and you have these veins called jugulars. You have an internal and you have an external jugular vein. There's no, no, there's no external jugular vein. It's only an internal jugular vein. Like right up here, you can see here. So on this model here, you have the internal jugular vein. The external jugular vein is more out. It's more lateral, that's typically cut, okay? On the cadaver lab, you could probably see the external jugular vein. On dry models, it's, this is the internal jugular vein, so just keep one thing in mind that's typically overlooked. So you have the internal jugular vein, now remember, so you have the brachiocephalic trunk. Here, it's a brachiocephalic vein. Brachio, arm, cephalic, head. Over here, you have the left side. This is a left brachiocephalic vein. Here, you have the right brachiocephalic vein, which drains into the superior vena cava. Just like over here, this is a better, this is a better view. You have the left brachiocephalic vein, and you have this portion here is the right brachiocephalic vein. And you can see here, left and right subclavian veins respectively. Okay? So remember, when you're, when you're drawing this out and you're, and you're explaining this, start off at the heart with the arterial system, go to the head, go to the extremities, come down to the stomach, bypass the legs, go to the feet, and then with the return flow, you wanna start off at the feet, go north through the liver to the heart, go to the hand, come up to the chest, and then drain the head. And that's how you study this, all right? Thanks for watching.